it's the Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull speaking. And as I look forward to taking a trip to the United States of America to meet the 45th President Donald Trump to speak about our mutual policies, our trade agreements and the security of our nations, I need to address something in particular and that is Barnabas Joyce. Now I've known Barnaby for a long time. The guys really shat me quite badly. People used to say to me, where's Barnaby from? And I'd say, I don't know where he's from. Look at his head, it looks like it's made out of pork crackling with beetroot smeared across the front of it. And now he's blown up this whole case with his staffer, Vicky Campion. Barney, Barney Banana, the beetrooter. A man that should have yuckety sacks, the Benny Hill theme, following him around because he's a clown and a fuckwit. A fuckwit of the highest order. And there's very rarely a, a moment when there's not a corona pouring into that rancid bonce of his. Barnaby's an accountant and he wears a, an Akubra around. If you want to be a farmer, if you want to wear an Akubra, you should do what farmers do. Sow some seeds. Oops, you've already done that. Do some harvesting. Yes, you have. Cover the herd. Mm-hmm. Get a wife. <laughs> gotcha. Farmer wants a wife. You don't want one, Barnaby. You had one, and you got rid of her, and then you've got another one now. You fucking idiot. Farmer doesn't want a wife because you're not a farmer. You're an accountant. And now I'm going to be embroiled in some controversy of whether Vicky Campion was, in fact, installed in Matt Canavan's office and whether I knew about it. Now, I'm holding the line on this. They had become intimate. They had had sexual relations. They had conceived a child. They were living in a rent-free flat in Armadale, but they were not partners. Now, of course, if they were on Centrelink benefits, they would have been struck off. But it's different for people who have power and privilege. Are you following me? Do you understand? They were definitely not partners. Just because you live together, you've got a baby, you've said, I love you, you're having sex, it doesn't mean you're a partner. No one's buying this shit, are they? I mean, I walk around Lake Burley Griffin with Lucy and I think, oh, Jesus Christ, what a boring place. Like Sam Dastiari said, he called it Hollywood for ugly people. And I concur wholeheartedly. There's 150 members of the House of Representatives. There's 76 senators in the Senate. That's 226 ugly people already given power and privilege. Of course, they're all over each other, sexually. They're stuffing the ballot box, crossing the floor, and distributing preferences. They have turned the political lexicon into the Kama Sutra. Everybody's getting into it. I even saw Corey Bernardi buy a strap-on in Fishwick. At a servo in Yass, I saw Jenny Macklin purchasing a porno. Albo's got a foot fetish. Christopher Pine loves to be covered in cheesecake. Ross Cameron draws dicks on his seat. Julie Bishop runs with her Benoit balls in. I've even seen Mitch Firefield and Peter Dutton shopping at Bunnings for a hammer drill and polyfiller. Michaelia Cash, we exchange underwear. I'm wearing a pair of hers right now and they are comfortable. It's Canberra. It's sexual. It helps fight the boredom. So tell me what politicians you've seen in and around Canberra, what they've been buying and what you think they're using it for. Malcolm Turnbull. Bye now.